So you've probably heard that sitting is the new smoking, maybe you're toying with the idea of minimalism, or perhaps you even heard about the furniture-free movement. Whatever it may be, by watching this, it's clear that you're thinking about how to maybe get a few more steps in your day, feel a little less stiff, and get a little more flexible without attending overpriced yoga classes. Well, stay tuned, because I'm about to guide you on how to do just that, while at the same time adding some originality, flair, and maybe even a little bit of hip into your home. I'm Roar Alexander, wellness architect and healthy living expert, and this is my part two of my three episode series on furniture free living. And I'm going to give you my top 10 ways to start designing a home and life that's a bit more movement friendly, burns a few more calories, and helps you get a lot healthier without even really trying. But before we get to my top 10, however, I'd like to explain a concept of NEAT or N E A T, non exercise activity thermogenic because this is a concept that's very important to your long-term health and fitness success. NEAT simply means the energy expended for everything we do that is not sleeping, eating, or sports-like exercise. It ranges from the energy expended from walking to work, typing, cleaning, gardening, and even fidgeting. In fact, something as simple as fidgeting can burn an extra 350 calories a day, meaning over a year, the same calories as in 30 to 40 pounds of fat. Isn't that crazy? Historically, we've always moved a lot more. We never had cars, escalators, moving walkways. We walked further to our jobs, to stores, to school, and our jobs in just day-to-day -day life tended to be a lot more laborious. Even everyday objects were heavier, made of heavier textiles, glass, metal, wood, and even riding a horse, if you're lucky enough to have a horse, burned a lot more calories and challenged both the muscles and core a lot more than just sitting in a car seat. One of the things that we've tried to do to replace all of this lost physical activity is go to the gym. But studies have shown us that in even general observation can prove that that is not nearly enough. In fact, even if you go to the gym for one hour a day, seven days a week, you are only 4% more active than your couch potato friend. And yes, that 4% is still, you know, an important 4%, but it's 4% nonetheless. And in fact, Dan Buettner of the Blue Zone summed it up quite nicely by saying exercise from a health perspective is an unmitigated failure. The world world's longest lived people live in environments that nudge them into more movement. And in his 2019 book, The Inflammation Spectrum, Dr. William Cole tells us that human bodies are not meant to sit all day. They are meant to walk, run, carry, lift, and even swim. Squatting and even just sitting on the ground is by far much better for your body than sitting in a chair. And he goes further to say, never sit when you can stand and never stand when you can walk. Now in North America, we typically average only 43 to 4,800 steps per day versus countries like Hong Kong and Japan, 7,000 plus steps. And we sit an average of eight hours a day. Add that to that six to eight hours you're sleeping and that is a lot of static and rigid positioning that the gym can in no way really counteract. And to top it off, we have every modern convenience possible to stop us from doing even the smallest amount of manual labor, from electrical can openers and coffee makers to a Lexus. So with all this in mind, let's take a quick look at what we can do to nudge ourselves into a little more movement each day. Number one, before removing anything, try adding some floor cushions or small seats that promote more sitting on the floor or just deeper ranges of motion. Find some fun artistic and designer cushions. Uh, get unique. Check out meditation seats or classier beanbag chairs, poofs or oversized ottomans. You can also take out one chair and add one cushion if space is an issue. Get Bali, Middle Eastern or India inspired and have some fun with your new floor loving lifestyle. Number two, put down some yoga mats by the TV or set up a yoga room or yoga area. Get some rollers, massage tools, a yoga belt or Pilates bands to promote stretching. Even a small home workout area can be very beneficial. I myself keep a small place to hang my iPad on the wall to act as either a gym timer or to do some follow along workouts, guided meditation or follow along yoga flows. 
Number three, my favorite, build yourself a Zen zone in your home that will have you getting on the ground to do some simple mindfulness techniques, breathing practices, and meditation. I keep mine in the bedroom and again, have some fun with decorating it up with some really inspiring decor. Number four, use a standing desk or standing tables. In my home office, I use an anthro desk standing desk for my workstation, which I'll often use in all three positions, standing, seated, and squat depth, along with a very small squat stool. But in my living room, I also have a glass style bar table, you can see back there, that I drink my morning coffee at, uh, which also happens to be where I keep my SAD light for a quick energy boost in these long winter months. So you can also add something, however, like a Swiss ball or Swiss chair to get some core work when sitting, even if you're just using a regular sitting desk. Number five, take more walks. In my opinion, the best times are in the morning before your day starts or after dinner. I do suggest investing in a basic fitness tracker to use for a while and challenge yourself to aim for at least 7,000 steps a day or try seeing if you can hit 2,500 steps before you leave for work. Now to help with this habit, I set my shoes right beside the door and I keep my travel coffee cup ready for my walk so it's ready and I get that ready right before I go to bed. Number six, go barefoot. We go all day in socks and shoes, which is essentially the same as wearing a cast on our feet all day. Imagine if you wore tight mittens 14 hours a day, how your hands and fingers would both grow and feel. The feet have over 7,000 nerve endings and are a huge part of our balance and overall body strength. So let your toes move freely and even have some yoga toes, a ball, a roller, or some reflexology mats to stimulate the feet and arches and have some fun with textured floorings, carpets, maybe a river stone mat, anything that allows the toes some unique sensations. In Asia, even in brand new condos, you'll often see very small rock paths built for walking on barefoot and there's no reason why we can't do the same inside or at least outside of our homes. Number seven, try adding some Japanese inspired furniture, maybe a low dining or coffee table you can eat some meals at, work on your laptop, even read a book. Adding what I call functional furniture is a great way to start adding some additional ranges of motion and movement into your day. Now, speaking of Japanese inspiration, number eight is try using a low profile bed. Today's beds are so high when you get off it, you're almost in a standing position with very little effort. Nothing beats just having to get up and down from a floor a couple times a day. Number nine, for kids, if you have the space, try adding some fun features like a ladder or gym rings or other obstacles that they have to climb over or under. Outside is a great place to build something as well if you have a yard, but try to do what you can inside the house as well, particularly for these winter months. And finally, we get to number 10, invest in a squatty potty, possibly one of the most simple yet functional health pieces you could ever buy. The squatty potty is a must have for those of you that are really wanna tweak your overall health. And there you have it, my top 10 ways of getting more furniture free and adding some simple, everyday, non-exercise physical activity into you and your family's lives. For more ideas like this, as well as many more topics on nutrition, exercise, healthy travel, biohacking, and holistic living, make sure to follow my blog on my personal website at www.roaralexander.com. Tune into my Health by Design podcast on Apple Podcasts, Anchor, and Spotify as well as subscribing to my YouTube channel and my Instagram at Roar Alexander. And until next time, I'm here to help you live stronger, longer, and as always, better.